We're going to take a look at solving absolute value equations in this video. Notice that on this particular equation you see here there's some straight lines around um, this 2x plus 3. Those straight lines are absolute value and they're actually asking you a question. They're saying how far from 0 is this quantity here? Now we can't um, say how far from 0 yet because you have this 2 and this minus 3 out front. So one of the first things you'll have to do on these equations is get your absolute value, whatever's in the absolute value, all by itself with the absolute value symbols, which means we need to move the 2 and the 3. Now notice that this negative 3 here is being multiplied by the absolute value. We cannot distribute it in. Don't do that. We also can't um, subtract the 2 and the 3 first um, because we need to be able to do multiplication by order of operations first and we can't multiply since you can't distribute into an absolute value. So the first thing we need to do is move the 2. And since the 2 um, is a positive 2 and it's um, subtracted from it is this quantity with the absolute value, um, the opposite of having that positive 2 out there is to subtract 2 or have a negative 2. So we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. That makes this go away. So we now have negative 3 times the absolute value of 2x plus 3 and that equals negative 6. Now we can move the 3. The 3 is being multiplied um, right here by the absolute value and the opposite of multiplying is divide. So let's move it by dividing both sides by negative 3. So we'll divide both sides by negative 3. That makes these cancel and we're left with the absolute value by itself. And we over on this side have a 2 since negative 6 divided by negative 3 is positive 2. Now what this is saying is when is this quantity 2 away from 0? Well that can happen at either 2 or it can happen at negative 2. To be 2 away from 0, if you look at a number line, you can be on either side of 0. So if 0 is here, to be 2 away, I could be up here at 2 or I could be down here at negative 2. When you solve this equation, you need to take into consideration the left side of 0 and the right side of 0. So what we do at this point, now that the absolute value is by itself, is we take into consideration both sides of 0 by making two equations. One of them is just like you see the equation now without your absolute value symbols. The other one takes into consideration being on the other side of 0. So on the other side of 0 you're at negative 2. So we go ahead and do the equation with it equaling negative 2 instead of positive 2. You can get to the same spot we're going to get with this by making sure that you change the signs on one side of the equals for one of the equations. In this equation here, notice I changed the sign on this right hand side. As long as you change the signs on one side, you're fine. So this is your original equation, that one will work, but then you'll miss an answer if you don't do the other equation taking into consideration the other side of zero like we have here. From here you just solve normally so on both of these equations we're just going to subtract 3 from both sides so we'll do it here and get 2x equals negative 1. We'll also do it on this equation which over here gives us 2x equals negative 5 and then we need to move the 2. In order to do that, we'll divide by 2. So let's go ahead and divide both sides of this one by 2. And one solution is negative 1 half. If we plug that into the original equation, it will work. Over here, if we finish solving this one, 
and divide both sides by 2. The other possible solution would be negative 5 halves. If that is plugged into the original equation, it will also work. Remember to always write your solution as a set. So this is the set of negative 5 halves and the other number in here is negative a half. So this would be how you would write your answer. You would say the solution set is and then give the set. Now this particular one was very similar to solving a regular equation until you got to here and then you split into two equations which you solved normally. Um, this one only had one any, uh, absolute value. What if your equation had two absolute values? Let's take a look at that. We're going to take a look at this absolute value equation. We have the absolute value of 3x plus 5 equaling the absolute value of 4x minus 7. In this case, we have two absolute values and both of them are by themselves. So we actually are ready to split into two equations. One of the equations is just like you see it here without the absolute value. This is considering when the absolute value would be the same on both sides. However, if you were to look at an, a statement with absolute values, you could have a statement like, let's say absolute value equals 5. Well, that's going to be the same as absolute value equals 5. Or, if you had negative 5s on both sides, that would be true. Notice on this particular one, and the one we looked at before, what was in the absolute values was equal. However, when you're dealing with absolute values, you can also have this true if one of them is positive and one of them is negative. Because when I do the absolute value of this, I get 5, and of this, I also get 5. Is that what is in the absolute value is the opposite on them. So one of them is exactly the way you see, and the other one is the equivalent of multiplying it by negative 1. So to get our equation up here for our second equation, we're going to do exactly that. We will leave one side the same. I'm going to leave the left side the same. It doesn't really matter. And then the other side, we're going to multiply negative 1 by it. And that will give us this situation where what's in the absolute value, um, both sides are opposite of each other. So let's go ahead and solve these and we'll get our values. So I'm going to do each of them separate this time. Um, in the one, the first one that we have over here, I first want to get the x's together. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 4x from both sides. If I subtract 4x from both sides here, you get a negative 1x plus 5 equals negative 7. And then I need to move my 5. So let's subtract 5 from both sides. And I get negative 1x equals negative 12. Now I just have to divide by negative 1. So if I divide by negative 1 on both sides, the x ends up being 12. If you plug 12 back into this original equation, it will work. You will get a statement that is true. Now let's go ahead and find the other possible thing. First, let's distribute our negative 1 here. That gives me negative 4x plus 7. Now I want to get my variables on one side. And notice that over here I have a negative 4x. I want to move that, so this time I'm going to have to add 4x in order to move that, because you have to do the opposite. So I'm going to add 4x to both sides. Those cancel, and over here I have 7x plus 5 equals 7. Now I need to move the 5, so let's subtract 5 from both sides. That gives me 7x equals 2. And finally, 
Let's go ahead and divide both sides by 7, which makes our other solution 2 sevenths. If you plug the 2 sevenths from here into this original equation, it will also work. And remember, we need to say that the solution set is, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in numerical order, 2 sevenths, 12. So that is how um, you go ahead and solve these where you have an absolute value on each side.